Hey guys, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic, and today we're going to answer the question, is it time to change your brake pads and rotors? Now, maybe a mechanic told you you're at four millimeters on your pads and it's dangerous to be driving, or maybe you've never changed your brake pads and you don't want to destroy your rotors, so you want to check them out. So we're going to get into all that, but before we get into it, if you find this video helpful and the channel valuable to you, help us out by giving us a subscribe, sign up for notifications, leave us a comment, it'd be awesome. So with this van, the owner is complaining about a squealing, scraping sound coming from the wheel. And obviously, the fear is that if the brake pads run out, then the metal will rub on the rotor and you'll destroy your rotor as well. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a brake sound though. There can be lots of sounds coming from the wheel. And we actually have a great video on the sounds that cars make. You can check out right here. So in order to confirm whether or not these brake pads actually need to be changed, we need to visually inspect them. And actually, in many cases, doing that can be really simple. Some cars have really good access to see the caliper and the rotor. Um, they have big open ports, like some sports cars have real big, nice access holes that you can really see this caliper, and you can see where the pad touches the rotor, and that's what we're interested in. Some cars have a plastic cover you could pop off really easy and look. But basically, this is the easiest way, if you can, to look at the pad depth. And um, what you're looking for is right in here on this car where the pad touches the rotor and you're looking for how much thickness is on the on the pad not this metal plate but you're looking for this pad so unfortunately on this van i can't get a good enough angle to see where the pad material touches the rotor so i'm not going to be able to inspect the pad from the outside so i'm going to have to go a little bit deeper so the next way to check your pads is on the back side of the wheel so in order to do this you need to be able to slide under your car and inspect the back side of the caliper. So for this van, I had to lift it up on some blocks so that I could get under there. And then I turned the wheel so that the caliper is sticking out away from the car. Some cars have them on the, on the trailing side of the wheel, so then you just obviously want to turn it the opposite way. And you're gonna get in there and try to see if you can see the contact point of the pad and the rotor on the back side of the caliper. Um, one trick, you can use your phone with the camera and get it in tight to reach spots and inspect it that way but this is essentially what a lot of mechanics do when they have a lift they get the car up in the air they can walk underneath it and they can look on the back side of these calipers and see how thick the pads are basically there would usually be a spot right in here that you could see or sometimes down underneath at the bottom for this van i'm not going to be able to see the pad using this method and we're going to have to pop the wheel off So on most cars, once you get the wheel off, you should pretty easily be able to see the pads through these vents. Now, depending on the design of your car, they may not have the access holes in the caliper and you may not be able to see the pad through the front. So you'll have to take off one or both of your caliper bolts, to get it out of the way to see the pads. Some cars, you can get away with just doing the lower bolt and swinging the caliper up, which is kind of nice. We'll see if this works. Yeah, look at that that pad away take a look so one benefit of having to take the caliper off to inspect your brake pad is you get to look at the face of the material and see things like on this one there's some cracking from heat um, so even though the thickness may be okay the the actual overheating of the brake pad is a reason you may want to replace the brake pad anyway on this side it looks like these pads have five or six millimeters left on them which I think you could still get some good mileage out of however it's best practice to check both sides of the vehicle because they can wear unevenly. So just because these ones look okay doesn't mean the other side could be really low. So now I can take a look at what the pads look like. And they are significantly different. This one is almost down to the metal. So I'm glad I checked this side. This is probably exactly what he was hearing. The indicator on the pad is dragging on the rotor and um, it's a really good time to be replacing these pads. So you can see this thing was just about through to the metal. Um, and I can see this little indicator is all shiny. It's been rubbing like crazy on the rotor. That's a new pad, that's what it should be. I definitely would say he got his money's worth out of this brake pad, but probably cut it a little too close. But let's be honest. Sometimes mechanics take advantage of us 
when we don't know what they're talking about and they get us to buy new stuff when we don't really need it. So I'll give you some numbers so that you can decide what's safe or not. Now obviously we're talking about brakes so you don't want to like make things dangerous for you and your family but it's a fact that when a mechanic tells you that you need to change your brake pads immediately at four millimeters I can drive another two months where I live on four millimeters and be totally fine. So you just have to take into account your car and the kind of driving you do. So a new brake pad is going to be about 12 millimeters or half an inch thick. Now a lot of mechanics are going to tell you at four or even five millimeters time to change your brake pads. It's dangerous. They're afraid of liability and they're also trying to sell you brake parts and they're assuming that no one's checking their own brakes so they're just playing it safe. But we as budget mechanics we are checking our brakes. So you can comfortably take a brake pad down to three or even two millimeters before it's considered dangerous. And actually, brake pads that have the little low indicator scraper on them will start squealing at about two millimeters. So just for reference, three millimeters is two pennies stacked on one another. And uh, you can kind of see this is one of the pads that we took off this van. And just keep that in mind as you're inspecting your own pads. So when it comes to rotors, and you take your car to a shop, they're gonna cover their butts in recommending new rotors too. So they're gonna say, you should always replace your rotors with new pads, or this is below minimum spec and you need new rotors. But the reality is, as long as the surface where the brake pad is rubbing is in good shape, meaning no big rough edges, no rusty pitting, no big lips at the top or the bottom, it's probably good to keep using the same rotor. So just as a disclaimer, as we're talking about brake wear and the numbers and when you should change them, just keep in mind that it is really dependent on a lot of variables, like where you drive, if you're going up and down a lot of hills, if you have the highest quality pads versus the cheapest ones. So it's actually really important that you are inspecting your own brakes and you're familiar with how fast they're wearing out so that you can better make a decision on when to change them. And ultimately, the choices all come down to heat. Brakes create a lot of heat because of all the friction, right? So the thinner your pads get, the thinner your rotors get, the faster they heat up and therefore are less effective. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And remember, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like, and hit that alert button. We'll see you next time.